Address resolution protocol or ARP is a fundamental protocol. It's on everybody's network. It's used every day so that we can communicate to these devices that are on our local network. That's because we may know the IP address of where we need to go, but networks communicate with a MAC address. So there's a conversion that has to take place so that we can determine what the MAC address of a device might be even if all we happen to know of that device is its IP address. And that's where ARP steps in. The process that normally goes through ARP is that we don't know anybody's MAC address. And let's say we need to communicate out to a machine. Here's a, a protocol decode, for instance, of my particular device that is sending a broadcast out because I need to access a device that has the IP address of 10.1.10.2. My IP address happens to be 10.1.10.56. So I'm saying, if you happen to be 10.1.10.2, please tell me your MAC address. And I send that out as a broadcast so that everybody on my broadcast domain, on my local subnet, can see that broadcast. And hopefully, if 10.1.10.2 is out there, it will respond. And as we can see in the next packet, it did respond. 10.1.10.2 is this particular MAC address. And once I have that information for 10.1.10.2, I keep it. I cache it. That way, if I ever need to talk to that device again anytime in the short time frame, I don't have to perform that ARP process again. I'll keep all of that information locally in a table so that I'm not sending out unnecessary ARPs all the time. If you wanted to get some insight into your local ARP cache so you can understand if you're trying to ping a device, was I not able to ping because I wasn't able to get a MAC address for that device? Or am I not able to ping because it's not responding to ICMP? So what we'll do is just type ARP. And in Windows, you'll get a list of everything. If you're in a different operating system like Linux, you may need to type man ARP to get the manual for ARP. But you can see here that ARP displays and modifies the IP to physical address translation tables used by the address resolution protocol. And you've got all of these different options that you're able to look at. One of the most common ones we use is an ARP-A, which simply displays the current ARP entries. So let's do that. Let's do an ARP slash, uh, dash A. And we're going to get a list of all of the different ARP entries that we happen to know about. So on my network, I've communicated to a lot of local addresses. And here are all of the different MAC addresses associated with all of those devices. Some of the IP addresses are local and static on my particular computer. But you can see everything from 10.1.10.1 all the way through 10.1.10.67, I now have that local MAC address that is on my machine. I don't have to ARP for those any longer. Now, these will time out after a while. They'll go away, and the ARP process will send another ARP request so that it can fill in that particular part of the table and keep that information local. All of the devices on your network generally have an ARP cache inside of them so that they aren't sending unnecessary ARPs every time they want to communicate to a device. If you're working with a server that has multiple interfaces, multiple NICs inside of it, you may choose to do an ARP-A with a V on the end. The V is for verbose. It will break out your ARP cache into the separate interfaces on your computer. And you can see the exact IP address and the number associated with that particular interface, the physical interface, and then the ARP cache specific to that interface. If there are other interfaces, here's my loopback, for instance, which has a number of 1, a hexadecimal 1, 0x1, you can see the ARP table associated with the loopback. So if you're on a server and you've got many different cards, you can see exactly what the ARP cache is for each one of the interfaces inside of your device.